Okay, welcome to tutorial 26. And in this tutorial, we're going to design an amplifier that's going to amplify our voice, and the voice is going to come through a microphone, and then we're going to hear it on a loudspeaker. So let's look at the first portion of this, our input subsystem, which is the microphone. And a microphone is a transducer. In other words, it converts one form of energy into another, in this case, it's going to convert sound energy into electrical energy. Now, as regards this particular design experiment, we need to know what amount of electrical energy is coming out of a microphone. So we're going to do a quick experiment just to look at that. So the best way of doing that is by using our oscilloscope. So what I have here, I have my microphone. I've connected up the end of it, which is a jack plug, just to my red and black, which I fed into the oscilloscope. And I'm going to talk into the microphone. So if it sounds a little bit muffled, it's because I've got the microphone right up against my mouth. Hello, hello, hello. Now you may have seen that waveform just flicker slightly because we're not seeing very much. So I'm going to change the sensitivity. Up we go, 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 up we go. There we go. And now we can see a waveform far more clearly, clearly because we've amplified that signal. So if I talk into that, you can see the waveforms clearly going up and down. And what we're really interested in here, we're interested in the amplitude, not so much the frequency. So now I'm going to shout into it just to see how high that will go. Uh, and you can see that it's gone completely off the screen. So I'm going to turn this down a bit. Uh, so how many divisions was the amplitude of that signal? Uh, it's about four divisions. And currently my volts per division setting is set to 0.1. So if I had four divisions and it's on 0.1, that means that the amplitude of that signal is 0.4 of a volt. When we look at the waveform, we can of course change the time base, but of course it depends on the frequency of the signal that I'm, I'm talking or shouting or whistling. Oh! So let's draw that waveform. So we had approximately four divisions, and what I'm drawing here, the y-axis and the x-axis. So there's one division, there's two divisions, there's three divisions, four divisions, because I've gone above and below the zero volt line. I should point out I was actually on the AC setting on the oscilloscope. So therefore, this was worth 50, that 100, minus 50, minus 100, to give us a 200 volt, sorry, 200 millivolt waveform. And it looks something like, even though it's not very easy just to draw, it looked sort of, you know, it went all over the place, but it didn't really get a lot higher. The amplitude here is the critical thing. So 200 millivolts is equal to... 0.2 of a volt because we move the decimal place back three places for that milli gives us 0.2 of a volt. So in activity one we've measured the output of the microphone converting sound energy into electrical energy. In activity two, we're going to have a quick look at the range of frequencies over which we can hear, because of course we're going to need to listen to the output of the amplifier on a loudspeaker. And loudspeakers have limitations, as do our ears. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect up a loudspeaker to a frequency generator. This is the easiest way of carrying out this particular experiment. And Remember that the frequency generator is not an amplifier, it just produces an alternating waveform. And I'm going to be using a pure signal, just a, a sine wave. And I've connected it to the loudspeaker so you can see a little bit of what's happening as well. So I'm going to turn on my 
turn on my um, frequency generator. I'm on an extremely low frequency at the moment, which is just one hertz. You can see it going up and down. And in fact, all that's happening on the loud speaker here is that it's, it's actually popping. So you may not be able to hear this very well. So next, I'm going to up the frequency. And again, you may or may not hear that very clearly. There's not really much to hear. And I'm now going to I'm now going to up this again. So once more, I'm going to increase the frequency. And maybe you can start to hear something now. And we're at 168 hertz. And now we're at 247. So let's knock that down, go up again. So I'm at 254 hertz. Now hopefully you can hear that much more clearly. That's about a one kilohertz waveform. So how far up can I go before I can't hear that frequency any further? Now I know the range, I'm going to go down here, so I'm at 2.8, 3.4. Now that there is about the the top of the range of the frequency that I can hear. And that is sitting at 12.84 kilohertz. So, so uh, 12,840 hertz. So the questions here, what is the maximum frequency you could hear? Well, mine was about 12.84 kilohertz. What was the minimum frequency? Well, I heard down to about 70 hertz. And what frequency would you consider to be the strongest? I think mine was probably somewhere around somewhere around 2.6 kilohertz. The two things we need to know here are that the audible range of human hearing, i.e. the range of frequencies over which humans are said to be able to hear, is about 20 hertz to about 20,000 hertz. This is uh, considerably decreased as you get older. So when I do this activity in class, pupils of 15 years old can hear up to about 18 kilohertz as a maximum. And this 20 hertz is a very low tone. In fact, it doesn't sound anything much more than a bit of popping. And then the range of the human voice, i.e. that first activity where we spoke into the microphone, is said to have a bandwidth, a range of frequencies between 300 hertz and 3400 hertz. In other words, somebody talking very low would talk about 300 hertz and a lady opera singer possibly could hit a very high note of about 3400 hertz. In fact, we very quickly... There we go. That would generally be considered the top range of a female voice. Okay, let's move on to the next activity.